Now, look, you've also heard me say many times, my listeners and viewers are my best researchers. Well, an email arrived from Heather Morley this week. This is amazing. Reminding me of the story of Lenny Gwytha and his horse, Ginger Mick. And Heather wrote, I believe now more than ever we need to be reminded of the courage and determination displayed by our forebears. I want to take you back to 1932. Australia's in the grip of the Great Depression. One in three workers unemployed. Decrepit shanty towns hug the outskirts of the big cities. A rabbit caught in a trap feeds a family for a week. Sydney's hungry mile is lined with men seeking just a few hours' work to earn a quid. Our story this week begins on the outskirts of the South Gippsland town of Leon Gather in Victoria. World War I hero Captain Leo Tennyson Gwytha is in hospital, broken leg, unable to tend the family farm. The farm's in danger of falling into ruins. He's got a nine-year-old son, Lenny, who decided enough was enough. Lenny grabbed his pony, Ginger Mick, and ploughed the farm's 24 paddocks to keep the place running until his father could get back on his feet. You could leave the story there and it would be a great yard. It gets a whole lot better. Troy Lennon is the Daily Telegraph's history editor. He does a brilliant job. Troy joins us to tell the second half of the story. Troy, good evening. Lovely good to have you. Alan. The family Thank wondered, you. didn't they, how to reward young Lenny because he'd been obsessively following one of the biggest engineering feats of the era, the construction of the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Tell us what happens next. Well, the father actually says, well... You know, what would you like to? How would you like to be rewarded for what you've done? And he says, oh, "I'd like to go see the opening of the uh, Sydney Harbour Bridge." Now, this is the it's the biggest ticket item <laughs> happening in this yeah. year. Eight hundred miles, eight hundred miles away. I mind. Eight hundred miles. Yeah. It's, it's no small distance. Yeah. So what, but... Lenny? So Lenny, the nine-year-old, saddles up Ginger Mick, packs yeah. a toothbrush, pajamas, some spare clothes, and a water bottle, and begins yeah. the six hundred-mile trek, a thousand kilometres yeah. to Sydney. I mean, you can't imagine yeah. that today, but a nine-year-old no. riding a pony from the deep south of Victoria to the biggest and roughest city in the nation. No social media, no mobile phones. What, what was the journey like? Well, uh, he, he actually had a bit of help along the way. He, had, he stayed with friends and relatives along the way. And uh, because when he set out, it had already made a fair bit of news and newspapers had sort of reporting on where he was. So people would actually come out and give him a hand and, uh, and whatever else. But, but still, I mean, you know... The, and, but, I mean, that's these true. Days... These country towns, they just gathered, didn't they, on the route? Well, that's to, right. To yeah. cheer him on. And there were that's bushfires. Right. I think he was attacked by a vagabond. And then he there was rain and cold and biting winds. But tell yeah. us about... He reached Canberra and, yeah. and Premier, Prime Minister Lyons invited him into Parliament House. Nine. That's right. He had a cup of tea with the, the Prime <laughs> Minister and, yeah, and he continued, continued on his way and he... And, by the, by the time he reached uh, Sydney, uh, everybody knew about it and there were thousands of people. 10,000 people coming. lined the streets. Yeah, 10,000 people. People mobbed him. People yeah. mobbed him. Uh, they, they, Troy, they wanted his autograph and he yeah. was nine. But here's the best part. <laughs> he was invited to be part of the official parade at the Bridges opening and he That's and right. Ginger Mick were invited to make a starring appearance at the Royal Easter Show and Don Bradman... Wanted a meeting with him, gave him a signed yeah, cricket bat. Bradman so, yeah, signed a bat for him, and so you know, he's. Uh, he, I think his <laughs> granddaughters or great dan granddaughters still have Amazing. that. Amazing. So yeah. It's, so then uh, he headed it, home. He just got into the saddle, looked at the crowds, and said toodaloo, and he took <laughs> off. And then he arrived right. at Leon Gatha, and I think there's yeah. a bronze statue there, isn't there? There is a bronze statue. When he got back, there was a. a public reception, the mayor was there. Nine. Uh, and, yeah, nine years old. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's an astonishing feat. I mean, when you think about it, there are certain, you know, factors when you say there's, there weren't as many cars on the road for a start. Uh, country towns were pretty much, you know, it was horses and horse traffic and, and nothing much else. But still, it is an enormous, it's, a, it's an incredible feat. Yeah, and, and then and, the horse, you know, Ginger Mick, Ginger Mick, we've got to tell you, Ginger Mick died in the late 40s, still on the Gwytha farm. And That's Lenny, right, yeah, yeah. Lenny died of cancer in 1992 at the age of 70. As my correspondent Heather wrote, God knows we need these stories now more than ever. Troy, you are a star. You do brilliant work. <laughs> you can read Troy Lennon in the Daily Telegraph each day. And congratulations on your story today on Stan McCabe. I've got something special oh. coming up about him after the break, yeah. Troy. Many thanks. Hey, thank you. Thank thanks, you so much. Are they good news stories? I've got to tell you they are.